Hi, I'm Doc Palmer. I'm the author of McGraw-Hill's Maintenance Planning and Scheduling Handbook. Because the fundamental concepts of planning and scheduling are unusual, they're weird, they're not normal, people just can't do it right. And they implement planning and scheduling the way they think it should be. That just makes everybody angry and it's counterproductive and you get rid of it as soon as you can. Properly implemented, we get a huge pop in work order completion rate to do extra proactive work. And we get a quality improvement over the years as we work on stuff. But it's not just doing what you think it is. So there's principles involved. I have developed six principles of planning and six principles of scheduling. Uh, The first principle of planning we talked about um, a while back, you have to protect planners. It's a staff position. People grab them for other stuff. The second principle is we want to protect them so they can run a dimming cycle. I was remiss when we talked about that to show uh, one of Dr. Deming's books. Dr. Deming had 15 principles. Principle number five was this concept of continual improvement. You have to admit you're not perfect. And then principle three of my principles is we have to save information at the asset level. This valve, that valve, this valve, that valve, that valve over there. We need a separate file, paper or electronic, for each valve to save those little tips that we're learning over the years with the feedback. With that dimming cycle in place with those first three principles, we can't get bogged down in two common issues. One is the, how do you come up with a time estimate? And the second is, how much level of detail in a particular job plan? Today, principle four, we're going to talk about the labor estimates. Just a quick judgment on the part of the planners what you need. You could do an engineered standard where every valve takes so much time or every bolt takes 20 seconds. You have so many bolts. A person walking at a determined pace walks three miles an hour. This job is so far from the shop. And if it's hot, you add 10%. If it's cold, you add 10%. If it's above a certain elevation, you add 10%. That's just way overkill. We don't need that. You can also just not look at historical estimates because you have fast mechanics you have slow mechanics i don't want to speed up slow mechanics if they're doing a good job and they'll mess up if they speed up i worry about fast mechanics i don't really want to slow them down if they're not just naturally fast there's no typical mechanic could you come up with a typical time but the biggest diff the biggest problem with historical times is parkinson's law Parkinson's law is our enemy in scheduling. Parkinson's law says the amount of time assigned expands to fill the amount of time available. So in the past, we have not assigned enough work to defeat Parkinson's law. We know that because we're at 35% range time. So your historical times are generally longer than they should be. So what we want to do and what we need for a time estimate on the planner's part... It comes from, we know what a WAG is. It's a wild, awesome guess. It's just a guess. But we don't want just a guess. We want a a swag. And a swag is a scientific, wild, awesome guess. The literature doesn't call it a swag. The the literature calls it a, a judgment. But a judgment is just a, a guess by a person knowledgeable about an area. And so it's a swag, which is a scientific guess. We just need a guess for the time. Um, you know, if and we're guessing for a, not your worst mechanic, not your best mechanic, just a good mechanic typically knows what they're doing, craftsperson, and a smooth job. Now, there's not any maintenance job in the history of maintenance that goes completely smooth. But we're not going to add plus uh, 10% just in case. We're not going to add an hour just in case. Just if this job was a somebody generally knew what they're doing, no big hiccups, what would that job take? And we're thinking in terms of the day. A lot of maintenance jobs just take a day. So I'm thinking of a day, eight hours, well, they ought to be able to do this job. If they generally know what they're doing, nothing goes too bad. Uh, It's going to take all morning. 
So we'll just say four hours. Now, we're looking at another job, and we're thinking, that job will take most of the morning, but I just don't think that job's going to take the whole morning. So we just say three hours. Another job, we might say, that job's going to take all morning, but probably a little bit of the afternoon. We'll just say five hours. That job there, if somebody knows what they're doing, you know, I don't know. It's, gonna, it's not going to take the whole day, but it's going to take most of the day. We'll just say seven hours. That job's going to take all morning plus a good piece of the afternoon. We'll just guess six hours. Anybody ought to be able to do that job in a couple hours. <laughs> we just say two hours. Now, that job there, somebody knows what they're doing. They could do it in a day, but it's going to take the whole day. So we just say eight hours. And we include breaks. So I know the eight-hour job, they're going to check in in the morning. They'll probably take a break, take another break in the afternoon, and then a little bit of wrap-up time at the end of the day. But they should charge eight hours to that job, which is what you would pay a contractor. And we are competing against contractors. We might be contractors. But that's what we're going to charge that job is eight hours because we think it's honestly going to take all day. Now, the three-hour job, yeah, they probably check in in the morning, maybe take a break. Certainly for the four-hour job, they'll check in the morning, take a break. The two-hour job, I'm just not thinking they're going to take a break. Uh, the six-hour job, they'll probably take a break, check in in the morning. We're just kind of, in our mind, we're not thinking so much of that. We're just thinking, how much of the day is it going to take? So it's really easy to knock out. Our purpose is to plan all the work. It's not to have perfect job plans. Now, the big question is how accurate our job plans if we're just guessing like that. We're not just guessing. We're making a judgment, which is a swag, which is a guess by a person that has some knowledge in that area. These estimates are plus or minus, hang on, 100%. Th th don't stop listening. But they have a very normal distribution where as many jobs go over as under. So if you're estimating a job will take five hours, it might take one or two. It might take eight or nine. But enough work for a week for a crew, say 10 persons, a 400-hour week, if you bundle together enough work for 400 hours of these little nickel and dime estimates, it probably is plus or minus 15%. But individual jobs, they're just all over the place. And that's okay. That's okay. Now, a lot of people, their most common KPI is plan versus actual. That's the worst KPI in maintenance. It's counterproductive. By measuring that and using it, you'll ruin your maintenance force. Is the planner being graded? Well, if the planner is being graded, they should generally give mechanics more time than they need. Then Parkinson's law will kick in. The amount of work assigned fills the amount of time available. The mechanics will take the extra time, and the planner will get a great grade. But you've damaged your productivity because you're measuring the planners. Now, if you're measuring the craftspersons, the actual, if there's a job estimated for three hours, and let's say you happen to have a slow mechanic that does a great job if you don't rush them, uh, but they think in their mind that, that this job's going to take five or six hours to do it right. But I want to get a good score, so I'm going to take three hours and cut corners then you're sacrificing your quality. So if you're grading planners, you sacrifice your productivity. If you're grading your craftspersons, you sacrifice your quality. That is not the KPI to use for planning. The reason it's so common is it just seems obvious and you gotta measure something. But enter Dr. Drucker, a contemporary of Dr. Deming. If you've heard of MBO management by objective, Dr. Drucker says 90% of the time, people don't understand the purpose of their activity. That's nine out of 10 times they don't know. They're busy doing something 
without any regard to the purpose. So the purpose of planning and scheduling is to give us a huge pop in productivity and to give us better quality over the years. And see, this just sacrificed both of those. The purpose of scheduling, which we will use the estimates for, is to help us complete more work than we would normally complete. And the estimates just guessing by a planner making a judgment are good enough to fill up schedules, especially for the week, the 400 hours. I've erased that number. Plus or minus 15%. That's good enough to generally fill up schedules to defeat Parkinson's law. And we'll talk about that with the scheduling principles. Don't get too out of joint making perfect estimates or you'll actually counterproductively damage your productivity and your quality. Just knock out the time estimates, and they are good enough. That, that, that's weird, isn't it? We, don't under, we did not understand the purpose of the estimates. We thought the estimates were the purpose of planning, and that's wrong. So understand this stuff right. Get the productivity pop and the quality pop over the years. So thanks for letting me be part of your maintenance family for this little piece. And God bless, and we'll join each other in the future.